previously on YouTube, The Drawing Dead. St. Louis. I'm vlogging in St. Louis. Unbelievable, right? Not only will I be vlogging in St. Louis tonight, I'm gonna hit him with an old school look. Hey, if it was good enough for Doyle, it's good enough for me. So we're at Hollywood in St. Louis. We're gonna get some poker in. I don't know how much, because it's Wednesday night. And we might have uh, an appearance by rain delay. Who knows what that gets though. Cowboy Jamin in full effect and fifth hand in first orbit, I look down at pocket fives on the button. Never open limping here, I raise it to 12 and only get called by the small blind. Hot damn, we done flopped us a set! The small blind elects to lead into us for 10, and with this board being so draw heavy, I believe a raise here is in order. I make it 30, and he pretty quickly calls. The king of diamonds on the turn essentially changes, um, nothing. And when he checks, I bet $50. He hems and haws about it for a while, pretends like he has to make a really big decision, and then just ends up letting it go. And this hand super OMC opens from late position to $10. I elect to call the 10 with pocket threes in the big blind, and two other people call behind me. Out of position, I do flop a gut shot, but the action checks over to the original razor. He bets $25, leaving himself with $17, and I just elect a fold. In this session, the table I was at was incredibly, incredibly soft. I do happen to have pocket tens here, and there were a few limpers in front of me, but to be honest, I could have had two Costco cards here. It made zero difference as they were limp folding almost everything. And once I picked up the fact that they were just going to be folding everything, I raised about 90% of the time I was in the button or the cutoff. And guess what? They folded. Mid-session update time. The rain delayed one is uh, in town. It's like 60 degrees out here and he's freezing cold. It's <laughs> your ass. It's 60 degrees. <laughs> it is not 60 degrees. It's probably like 
you think it is? 60 degrees. 38? No. Do you only think it's 38? No. No, you're probably right. 43. But unlike me, these uh, city slickers can't handle the elements. <laughs> you're, you're a city slicker. Have, have, have they been introduced to your absurdness yet? Or is this the first time they're seeing it? They know what's going on. Cowboy Jamin. <laughs> anyway, anyway, tell the people how your session's going. Your session of poker. Is, is there something special happening? I don't know. No, are you winning? They uh, want to know yeah. if you're winning. Oh, but you make it sound like there's something like, yeah, I'm winning. Probably like, I don't know, like a hundred maybe. <laughs> you Why say that like it's no money. It's a lot of oh money. Oh my God. But you were like, tell them how your session's going. It's like something spectacular's happened in my session. There's nothing spectacular happening in here at all on a Wednesday night. Day after Christmas. <laughs> Are you that cold? You're it's not that chilly, cold. dude. It, you're ridiculous. It's a... <laughs> <laughs> Wednesday night, day after Christmas, and there's nothing going on in there, to be honest. Nope. It, except for my table. My table, I have won every hand that I've played. Every single hand. Is it the outfit? It might be. Is there, are you actually, are people, are you like bluffing and I am. people are folding? I am, I'm full black bar. Oh, yeah. Going that, black Bart on him. Excuse me while I whip this out. <laughs> oh. That's definitely because the outfit. Yeah, and People I don't know what to do with you. Like the beaver, they gotten used to, but this. Actually, I take it back. I lost one hand for ten dollars. But other than that, I'm winning seven dollars at a time continuously. So I think I'm up about three hundred at this point. This isn't like a good lighting spot, though, is it? So anyway, not much of a mid-session update, but this guy is in town, I'm killing the game, and he's barely winning just a little bitty, itty bitty bit. So we're gonna wrap up this mid-session update, we're gonna get back in there, I'm gonna hopefully keep winning. Well, I guess we only got one choice. Go for it. As will he, and then I'll catch you guys on the uh, flip side. Giddy on. <laughs> Oftentimes when you're playing an abnormally large amount of hands at a table because the players at the table like to fold, it becomes kind of tricky to get value with your big hands. Here, the under the gun player opens to 10, I raise it up to $35 with pocket kings, and the player in the small blind, who I have an inkling doesn't believe anything that I'm doing, decides to cold call. The original raiser folds and we see this flop heads up. No ace on the flop, which is always a good sign, and I decide to check back this queen high flop to underrep my hand and maybe get value on the turn in the river. Five of clubs on the turn puts two flush draws on board, and the small blind decides to lead for $20. My guess is he's probably picked up some sort of draw, because a real made hand probably would never just bet $20 into this pot. I pounce on this weakness and elect to raise it up to $70, and although he thinks about it for a bit, he finds the fold. I just didn't think he had that one. At this point in the session, the table is fully aware that I am up to some hijinks. The hijink value of King-10 offsuit is pretty damn high, so I open it up to 20 and get called by the player on the button. If there was a way to rate the players at the table that don't believe anything I'm doing, the villain on the button would come in number one. This nine high flop isn't too exciting, so I elect to check it over to him. He bets 40. And I choose to float with two overs and a backdoor or something or other. I bink one of those over cards on the turn and check it to him again. Let's see if he continues betting. He doesn't. He elects to check it back. So I'm pretty confident I have the best hand at this point. The river deuce of diamonds should change absolutely nothing, and I just go bombs away for $90. I've masked the villain's voice in this clip, so we can listen in to what happens next. I don't believe you. I just don't. 
the only problem is I still think you got me beat. So I'm gonna make this wicked call. This is all. Then we can. You. Where did you get it? Had an eight. Thought you. Then it's dead. Uh, Ace King Seven. done. Session's over. A successful return to St. Louis blogging. Unfortunately for blog content, not much happened after the mid-session update. In fact, not much happened before the mid-session update. I ended up in the game for 300 and cashed out at 630 in a very ho-hum session. I was never even really tested. I think I only had two hands even go to showdown. The table was very soft. He's got a simple solution for just about anything. And unfortunately, one of the biggest hands I did play, I didn't even get captured. In fact, it's not even that interesting. I just happened to flop a set and won a pot that was bigger than $20. This was just one of those sessions, you know? Just one of those sessions that, unfortunately, not much happened. Besides me wearing a big-ass cowboy hat. So with not much happening in there, there's not that much that's gonna happen out here. So I'm gonna wrap this whole thing up and say, thanks for watching. If you like the vlogs, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and I will probably respond eventually. And I will catch you next time. Probably next week. Oh, and happy new year. Even though by the time you see this, we'll be well into that year. I'll catch you later. Bye. Next time on YouTube's The Drawing Dead. So we're back at it. We're just going to hit the felt again Sunday evening. We're going to see if we can make magic two nights in a row. And we're going to do it on this Osmo Pocket, which I've never used before for vlogging. All of it. Let's go play some poker. Not only am I blog. Man, I make this hat look good. No, you don't. You make it look ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <that's> stupid. <laughs> uh, Cowboy Jamin. Good lighting spot, though, is it? Your spot the good lighting, lighting spot is, is like right here. This is it. Is this bad? But it's not that much better. I mean, it's. I'm just, I'm just, just watching you walk and hearing the click clack. Yeah, it's not of your, like it's not that much better. Hearing the click clack of your ridiculous boots is. Just, it's just. <laughs> you're, you're insane. I'm insane. Are you coming to Vegas? When? I'll be in Vegas eventually. <laughs> when you said that you might come to Vegas? I don't know. You should come. You should come. I don't know if I'm going to Vegas. I don't know. Who knows? Just trying to win my plane <clears throat> back. That's all. That's all, that's all I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to survive. <laughs> this is it. This is what's going on now. This is the look. 
The click clack is so loud. The click dude. clack is the nuts. It's so loud. So we're gonna wrap like up. Hearing the grinding from mm. underneath the bottom of your the heel of your boot. It's, Lost it's souls. all too much, man. It's too much. <laughs> Maybe you had the nine. I just, the way you take the line, I couldn't, I couldn't believe you. Yeah, I'll take a. Uh, what do I want? Give me another Caucasian Russian. <laughs> just one of those sessions that not. So, with not much happening there, there's not. not so, with not much happening there, there's not nothing. So, with not much happening. So, because when he hits Vegas, the boy stays mixing it up. Higher stakes like filet mignon.